Hey guys, it's Kelly. Thanks for coming back to my channel. I've got page 19 of my art journal done and I thought I would share it. It's got a lot of tips and a lot of, hey, don't don't make the same mistake I made moments. <laughs> it happens. So the only thing we missed here at the beginning was just a slap down of some watercolor. I just got some blue and orange watercolor and blended it together and then let it dry. And the whole premise of this, the whole reason why I'm doing this page is to experiment with the Nouveau alcohol markers that I have. I love them, but I they take practice. They really do. And and I wanted to share um, how this process went um, and hopefully give you guys the tips and, and tricks that I learned along the way. So I just used the lid to my Distress Collage Medium bottle just to put some uh, rough circles down. I have found that practicing and shading is really beneficial to use circles because you got to find out where the light's going to hit, you got to find out where the shadows are, and it's great for practicing. Um, I am not a professional by any measure, guys. I've said that many times. Um, I just play, right? I just play and go with what I like and um, share the things that I learn, and hopefully others will benefit from it. So um, what I found with now, now there's a lot of important things when it comes to to markers. The number one is your foundation. So the paper that you're going to use. If you try to use alcohol inks with regular copy paper, you, it's going to be a hot mess. It's just going to buckle. It's it's not going to take it. It's going to bleed through. It's going to get all over everything. So definitely don't recommend that. Um, now this paper in my mixed media art journal paper is a um, uh, 140 pound water. It's it's watercolor paper. Um, now, watercolor paper is made to really soak stuff up. So that's some of the challenges that I have with the blending of the markers on this paper is exactly that. It's soaking it up before it can really blend in. And um, it's not so much a problem, but it's just something to be aware of. Um, the paper that I highly recommend is using the smooth mixed media paper. About 110 or 130 pound would be great. It is a little bit pricey, it is, but you know, we're worth it. And, and our art that we create is worth it. So um, if you're gonna use a certain kind of medium, again, the, the, what you start with, your foundation that you build on is so important. It really is, the paper matters, it matters. So with all of that said, this is again, um, really, really thick watercolor paper. So it's really soaking up the markers. But the other tip that I found, um, and I actually learned it on YouTube, and I think it was, you know what, I can't, I've watched so many, I don't know. Um, but what I found, and is very true, is you have to saturate it. Saturating the paper with the color helps you get better blends. And what I have found too, which is another tip, is specifically with the Nouveau markers, they come in a set of three. So you have your light, your medium, and your dark colors, your shades. And um, that is so, so helpful. But when you get colors that are kind of similar, I couldn't recall which ones were included in the pack. So I kept the packaging. I recommend you do that because the purples and the blues can kind of send to go over each other. And when the when the uh, when the colors are already added together, it's it's very helpful, very helpful. And so at the end of the world, if you mix a color that didn't really go in the package, who cares? You know, play with it. But um, it's helpful to know which blues go together. So that was helpful for me anyway. So, um, and, and the, the cool thing here is like right there, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so dark. And I'm playing with the purples. I'm like, that is so dark. And I just ruined it. But the more you saturate it and the more you go over it with the different shades, the, the medium and the, and the light shade, um, the better it blends. So, and this, it blends great. It, it really does. But again, this is the, this is the paper that's like a sponge is really soaking it up. So it'll soak it up, it'll look really dark, but then once it dries and it gets absorbed, it it changes its color, it gets lighter. So that's something to keep in mind when you're using uh, watercolor paper with these. Again, it's, it, it's, it's not that I don't recommend it, it's just something to be very, very aware of. Because you, I mean, you're gonna use a lot of your markers to do it, which I did, which is fine, you know, but to get your blends, you gotta really keep, you have to go over it. This isn't a kind of color medium that you're just going to go over. It's one and done. No, you got to come back to it and keep blending and blending and blending. So, and I like it. I like it that way. So, and it takes time. Obviously, I sped it up. But that's why we do this. You know, it's a process and I like it. 
So the purples, again, right there, I'm like, oh my gosh, look how dark that is. I just ruined this whole thing. And um, then I went, that was the darkest shade. And then I went in with the medium shade. And then I went in with the lightest shade. And you'll see how it, it winds up being almost seamless. So, and it takes time. And you'll notice as the video goes on, it, the shades lighten up. It gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And granted, the lighting, I didn't change the lighting at all. But, you know, when you move the paper, it hits the light a little bit differently. <clears throat> And then again, that shade down there, those are the reds that I'm using. And I'm like, oh, wow, look how dark that is. And you're like, oh, it's alcohol ink. It's ruined. It's it, No, it's not. Just, you just got to play with it. So I went from the darkest shade and then to the medium shade and then to the lightest shade. And sometimes I take the lightest shade right back into it. And what, you, what I found is that it gets too light. So it's intimidating to work with it because you're like, oh, my gosh, that's too dark. It's too dark. And this is when I was having that little panic moment of, I just ruined it. I really like the top ones, and now I just ruined this one. And um, no, I just kept playing with it. Adding the lightest shade and then adding the medium shade. And it winds up working out really, really nice. So, and I, and, and again, I got a, a several in, several things in here like, hey, by the way, you might not want to mix your Faber-Castell markers to do shading with your alcohol ink. There's nothing wrong with these markers, guys. This is all operator error. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all me. And I'm fine with that. We're just learning, right? So I kept going back in and uh, redoing the shading and just playing with the colors and seeing how they, how well they blend. And it wasn't until halfway through the process here that I realized that, oh, it's my paper. I have really, I have 140 pound watercolor paper for my um, paper that I'm using. And it's really going to soak it up. And that's exactly what was happening. So important thing to keep in mind. And then the other thing that I discovered too is... Um, the ink will, whatever I stamp my image with, um, they don't, they're not all alcohol marker friendly. They're really, they are not. So um, I've ordered some Gina K, uh, I forget the name of it, starts with an A, but I've ordered that. So I will do a video on that too, um, because the, even the, the archival, it still was bleeding. And I was really disappointed in that because I didn't think that it would. I was like, archival is like the almighty, you know, it won't, it won't bleed, it won't go anywhere, but it actually did. Um, for right now, of all the black inks that I have in my, in my stash, the best one for this right now is um, Versafine, Versafine um, Onyx ink. So that's what's working the best, but you really got to make sure it's dried. So the blending marker that you can use in there is basically, the blending marker is basically just alcohol. So it's going to basically take up the color that you did. I would not recommend trying to add highlights with it. I really wouldn't, unless unless it's, I don't know, it wasn't working for me. Um, it just looked, again, try hard award. So it's like, okay, you're trying really hard to put a highlight on here, and you failed miserably. <laughs> so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Now, if you have a stamped image and you go outside of the lines with your with your marker, then use the blending marker with the with the with the nib, the the needle nib. The small nib, I'm not sure what to call it, but um, if you use that, it'll it'll kind of take the color off, almost all of it. So it's like a alcohol ink eraser. It's kind of nice. But this is where I started. I tried to add the gray Faber Castell marker um, to add some shadows, and not recommended. It just did not. Again, try hard award. Try too hard here. Did not work out well for me at all. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, I went in and fixed it after the video and then um, took pictures. So it, it does look a little bit better um, at the end and in the pictures. But throughout this whole thing, it was just driving me nuts because I did not like it. But again, this is just for experimenting and playtime. So so I got some stamps on Amazon. Um, really, I love the price point on them. They're definitely affordable. They're the right size for these art journals and card making. So I just used a uh, brick stamp and then a splatter stamp and I stamped them down with ground espresso archival ink 
it is crooked. I did that on purpose. Again, it's just kind of a practice shading, you know, fun page with that's bright and colorful. And then I have a banner die that you'll see down there. It has a couple strips of magnets. I just kind of put the magnets on a card, piece of cardstock and put it in a folder that I have. Um, so the it's it's like a stacked banner, and I wanted to try vellum on here. So I wound up cutting some vellum banners and coloring them. And I'll tell you, vellum and alcohol inks play so well together in the playground, for real. They play nice in the sandbox. So I definitely, I mean, color your vellum, vellum and then use your, and then die cut it. It's really, really nice. It's a really, really nice effect. It makes me think of Easter because once I color it with the alcohol, it kind of, it makes it have a pastel look because it's vellum and it has that cloudy look to it. So it makes me think of like pastel and Easter, um, but yeah, the vellum really takes uh, the alcohol ink or the alcohol markers really, really well. I was surprised. I was I was really surprised. Now the green one that I colored green, it didn't make the cut. It just didn't look right when I tried to put it down. I was like, nah, it's too many colors. I'm introducing too many colors. The green needs to go. So I wound up uh, just switching it out with a blue. But yeah, the vellum with the, it's so cool. So the vellum, you color it with alcohol ink. It takes the colors so nice and it still tra it still uh, stays translucent. So there's so many benefits to that. So many benefits to that. But keep in mind, like when I first color this blue banner, it looks really, really dark. When it dries, it's a lot lighter. But when it was super dark, I was like, well, I kind of want to see through it. So hmm, I was like... Oh, it's too dark. I, I don't think you're going to be able to see the lettering through it. So I added another strip um, of the banner just right on top of it, thinking that, okay, that'll be better because now you can see the black letters because they're, you know, they're on a clear foundation, so you can see through it. Um, and I thought the blue would be too dark. You wouldn't be able to see the black lettering. So I wound up taking my um, collage medium and on my finger and just smearing it on there and just gluing it right on top. Now the trick with the vellum is that well you you can't hide your 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 glue. But if it's all glue and there's no area where there is no glue, then it won't show. And that wind up being the fact. So I just use my finger and evenly spread it across there and wound up putting that right on top. Now after the fact um, the stickers have, are just like the clear I, I don't know if it's acetate, I'm not really sure what it is. <clears throat> but it's kind of like dried um, glossy accents. So um, you can see through it, but what I wound up doing after the fact is um, coloring that vellum, vellum with uh, blue alcohol ink so that the letters, you can still see the lighter color underneath, but then it's outlined in a darker blue. And I kind of like how that worked out. But these are letters I've had in my stash for eons, like creative imaginations. I've had this forever. And it's a cool set. And they, I'm surprised that they haven't yellowed. A lot of times that I have um, some of those letters um, that are like that, that clear, dried, uh, glossy accents kind of stuff. <clears throat> they, they yellow over time. And these do not. So it's kind of cool. But I wound up drying the adhesive and you can't see it because it's all adhered. So there's no bubbles or cloudiness. And then I wound up putting the word create on there. I was going through different words and what would fit perfectly and create wound up being the one that worked out. It's pretty cool. Those are perfect squares. You know, well, they're rounded squares. Um, so they're really easy to put down straight. Is mine straight? No, it's a little wonky, but guess what? I'm okay with it. <laughs> I'm fine. Perfectly fine with that. But the stickiness on this, again, these I was impressed with these. So creative imaginations, job well done, because this has been in my stash for at least five years. Maybe seven. Yeah, I've had these for a long time. And they did not yellow on me. <clears throat> So I wind up using um, foam tape 
to uh, give it just a little bit of dimension. You know, some people don't like to use phone tape and dimension in art journals. They're like, well, no, I save those for cards. And, you know, to each his own. I have the phone tape. I want a dimension. And that's what I did. I used it. I don't think it's wasteful at all. I think it's just a way of uh, creating what I want to create when I'm in my space. And I don't have one of those. I've, I've seen everybody with those massive rolls of foam tape. Um, again, I don't do that many cards. So I, I can't see investing in such a huge thing of foam tape. But I've been doing a lot of cards lately with all the kits that I've been getting. I'll have to, I have so much more to share, guys. I just, uh, finding the time to do it has been a challenge. But, um, but yeah, to buy a big old roll of the foam, I, I, I don't know. I think it would just get all cracked and dried by the time I would use it all up. And I've learned that lesson with my gesso, with my regular gel medium. Like I bought golden gel medium, regular gel medium, and it dried up on me. And, and I, yeah, I thought, oh, I'll buy big bottles of things because, yeah, don't buy the smaller bottles because they dry out over time and then it's just wasted money. Another tip. And then that uh, Nuvo uh, glue is so awesome. I love it. I love it. It's got a fine tip, like a needle nose tip. It's so great for really small die cuts. It's great for adhering letters. It's, oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I hear the Gina K. Uh, has a um adhesive too in a pen that is really good as well um i am i just ordered some today so hopefully i will get that soon and i'll tell you what i think about that so this is where i was like gosh do i want to put white highlights do i not want to put white highlights uh you know i was kind of i was kind of torn kind of torn i wasn't sure where i was going to go with it um i opted out because the letters, uh, because they're, they have that glossy finish, they're reflecting the light and there's some white on there. And I just thought it would wind up being too busy. And then to try to put a reflection on the spheres when I was trying to blend alcohol, I was like, I don't even think it's going to, it's going to stick on there if I put the mark, if I put the pen on there. So I opted out, but I do like adding those white highlights. But this is, um, I added the, uh, you know, you'd think I would have learned by now. Don't use this marker, but I just, I want to see what would happen on the vellum and try how to roar again. So it does. It looks like I tried too hard. Now, I like it when it looks unintentional when you're adding a shadow. This looks too intentional to me. Now, some people might like it and that's, there's not, not a darn thing wrong with it. You know, like it if you like it. I personally didn't like it. I didn't think that it, I thought that it looked like it was just Again, I, I tried too hard to add a shadow when maybe there shouldn't have been. So, but again, it's not the markers, it's the user. So, and I go in and I kind of, I try to correct it later, but once that Faber-Castell marker is on there, that's India ink, so it's, it's on there. You don't, you don't get to get rid of it. I did, you know, tone it down a little bit with the alcohol, but mm -mm, nope, it's, it's there for good. But I did like the, using the Fabric Castell marker on the shadows for the brick. That did turn out nice. I did like that. And it helped to bring it, um, to make it a little bit more noticeable, but it's still in the background. But yeah, it worked out nice there. But So there it is. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed page 19 and got some tips and tricks that you can actually use. And you won't get the Try Hard Award like I got on so many of the, th the things that I tried out. But... But I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. I love reading all the comments. I love getting the likes as well. And a whole lot more to come as soon as I get some time to upload some videos. Hope you all are staying safe and well. Take care.